Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. The history of Israel, Deuteronomy 28. With this being Black History Month, we're doing, we, we showcasing our true history as it relates to the Bible. Because our history is in the Bible. The Bible is a Black History book, if you didn't know. So, here, Israel United in Christ was founded in 2003. Our goal is to change the hearts and minds of our people. Blacks and Hispanics must learn the truth that they are the biblical 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Disobedience to God's laws has been the root of all our troubles. Blacks and Hispanics everywhere suffer the same racial, social, economic problems worldwide. Voting has not helped us. Christian churches have failed us. It's time for a change in these last days. We must give the Bible, the Bible's medicine to sick people. Then and only then will things begin to change. So next slide, we'll go right into it because a lot of things that go on in our community from the violence, the gangs, the drugs, everything, everything that goes on in our community, believe it or not, it's actually documented in the Bible. It's documented in the book of Deuteronomy 28 and also Leviticus 26. And that's what we're going to go through. We're going to start off with that, going through some of those things to show you all how black history is Bible history. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So stop there real quick. How many of you all were born prior to 1980? Who was born in the 1980s? Okay, 1990. 2000. Okay. So we got, we got a, few, a few generations in here. Uh, so, who all, who, anybody know who wrote the book of Deuteronomy? Moses. Let's read Deuteronomy 1 and 1. So, because to fully understand what this is saying, we got to know who wrote the book of Deuteronomy and who was he addressing. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea. So the book of Deuteronomy was written by Moses, and it was written to the Israelites, to Israel, to the nation of Israel. Back to 28 and 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses wrote to the Israelites that it shall come to pass, meaning something's going to happen in the future to the Israelites. If they, if they don't listen to the voice of the Lord God. Read on. To observe, to do all his command, commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So basically what, Mo, what Moses wrote to the Israelites is if, if you don't obey the instructions that God gave you, curses are going to come upon you. And we all know, is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? Say it again. Bad? Bad thing. Yeah. Exactly. So curses are bad things that's going to happen to the Israelites if they decide not to keep the commandments or follow the instructions that was given to them by the Most High God. Next slide. Read 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. So I know these the images are not that bright, but it said, Cursed shall thou be in the city. Who's familiar with the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre when Black Wall Street was bombed. That's a curse. That's a bad thing. And then, then, and then you see here on the, on the right, I don't know if you're all familiar with this, Lake Lanier, it says formerly known as Oscarville, Georgia. Oscarville, Georgia was a black community, but now it's Lake Lanier. What do you think happened to that community? It was destroyed. That's a curse. Same way that the, we had Black Wall Street, 
in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we were thriving, we had our own businesses, it was bombed. That's a curse. Next, next slide. Read. And curse shall thou be in the field. And curse shall thou be in the field. Most of us are, is there anybody here that's not familiar with this? <laughs> These images of seeing us in the lowest, the little, smallest, little, young, as young as babies, all the way up to elder, el our elders, picking cotton, picking sugar cane, serving hard bondage. This is a curse that is clearly documented in the Bible. And we see it's documented about the Israelites, but we know that this is our history. This is our history. Next slide. Read. Verse 17. Curse shall thou be. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. What that's referring to is our businesses being cursed. Our banks, our banking system, all of that goes back to, to what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And also, is anybody familiar with the Red Summer of 1919? Anybody familiar with that? Raise your hand if you're familiar with that. The Red Summer. Red Summer is the period from late winter to early autumn of 1919 during which white supremacist terrorism and racial riots took place in more than three dozen cities across the United States, as well as in one rural county in Arkansas. And a lot, with this red summer, racial riots, what was, the, what was the cause of a lot of those racial riots? It said in the article, it says white supremacist terrorism. No matter what we tried to do to excel, there was, it was always met with, uh, with resistance. We've seen it with Tulsa, Oklahoma, like we've seen on the last side. Same thing happened here, the red summer of 1919. And also the same thing with the Detroit, the Detroit destroyed summer of 1967. Read like the, probably the first two paragraphs. Okay. On that. 1967 Detroit riot, the precipitating event was a police raid of an unlicensed after-hours bar known as a blind pig on the city's near west side. It exploded into one of the deadliest and most destructive riots in American history, lasting five days and sur surpassing the scale of Detroit's 1943 race riot 24 years earlier. Governor George W. Romney ordered the Michigan Army National Guard into, destroy, into the Detroit to help end the disturbance. President Lyndon B. Johnson sent in the United States Army's 82nd. That's, that's it, okay. So, as you see, it said, curse shall be thy basket in our store. No matter what we do to try to get ahead, we always get set back 10 more steps. And that's a curse. And it's, it's a curse because like we read in verse 15, you go back, the, 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 the central, uh, the central point of why all these things happen throughout history is because we broke God's commandments and we continue to break them today. Go back up to 17. Next slide. Read that. Verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. So it says, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. The fruit of our body is our, the fruit of our body is our children. We have children, our children were born into slavery, and you see here on the left, Spaniards killing women and children and feeding their remains to dogs. On the right, you see our children being used as alligator bait. Go to Leviticus 26 and 22. Our children being used as alligator bait. That's our, that's our children being cursed. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. If you even look up to today, our children are born, and they, all they see and all they know is the ghetto. And they, really wake, they wake up, you got 13, 12, 13, 14-year-olds able to get a hold of a gun and be able to shoot another 13, 14-year-old down. That's a curse. That's all results of a curse. We got the short end of the stick. All because we are in the midst of seeing what the Bible defines as sin, breaking God's commandments. Read that. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 22. I will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. So that's, a, that's another, read the first part. 
Oh, that same part. verse? Okay, the first part. I will also send wild beasts among you, uh -huh. which shall rob you of your children. So he said he's going to send wild beasts that will rob you of your children. That's what's displayed here in both pieces of action. Next slide. And here, read 18, read verse 18. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. So, and, and many of us don't know this, but the, the natives are also Israelites. Those are our brothers. They was, they was already here. And this is the things that, things that happened to them. This they, the, the so-called uh, so white man came over here and took the land from them. And this is, this is the result. It says, the curse shall be the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Then you got on the, on the left, Indian land for sale. Get a home, get a home of your own, easy payments. Perfect title, possession on 30 days, within 30 days. Fine lands in the west, irrigated, irrigated, arable, grazing, agricultural, dry farm. And on the right, you see a bunch of dead cattle. Does those, all of these things happen, these things just didn't happen by happen chance. It happened because these were the curses. These are curses that happened, that came on the Israelites because they broke God's commandments, which shows and proves, and we're going to continue going, it shows and proves that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites. Next slide. Read the next verse. Verse 19, Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. So we're born into this world, we're born into a curse. We're born a slave when we die a slave. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Tony, Tony Thompson, born and died a slave. Matilda McCreary, transatlantic slave trade survival. Zora Neale Hurston, transatlantic slave trade survival. Next slide. Read that. Verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thy hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed. And until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. So, so we see the, the, the last part of this verse. All of these things is happening because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Because we, because we stop keeping the commandments. The most, just like a, a father disciplined his, his son, his daughters, his children. That's the same way. Because the nation of Israel is God's son. As he gave us instructions, we decided to go against those instructions. These are the things that happened in our community. Go to the next slide. These are the things. Ted Landsmark, assaulted in Boston. It's that cursing, vexation, and rebuke. Uh, Ted Landsmark, assaulted in Boston. Trayvon Martin, Ahmaud Arbery. Uh, uh, Philando Castile. All of these men, all of these things happened. They were shot. Unwarranted, and the the shooter either got very little time, didn't get nowhere near the the, the justice that they were supposed to get, or they was able to walk free. That's a curse. That's cursing, vexation, and rebuke. Next slide. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, and verse twenty-one. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land. Whether thou goest to possess it. So the pestilence. Pestilence is referring to diseases. There's various diseases that have been put out there, that have been created to affect us. Go to the next slide. You got H1N1, the swine flu. These things affect us more. So H1N1, the type A influenza virus that affects pigs. How does a disease that affects pigs end up affecting us? Us. That lets you know these things were created in a lab. And believe it, and whether you believe it or not, they were created in a lab directly to affect us. Other people may get it and things like that, but it's directly to affect us. This is a, a result of, of the curses that come on us after we break God's call, break God's law. You have the Ebola outbreak, COVID 19, which we still are going through the, the, uh, the aftermath of. And, going through the present. That's why we still have to wear masks. COVID-19. Uh, next slide. 
Verse 22, the Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Read on. Verse 23, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thy under thee shall be iron. So it says, the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Anybody want to take a guess at what that what that's referring to? Anybody? You said, what is that? The heaven, it says, the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. This is metal, this You said metal? It's metal, so I thought of impenetrable. It is referring to metal. Did I hear you say something? I said crown. A crown. Thy hair shall be brass like a crown. I know you know. Okay, I'm so wrong. <laughs> Next slide. So oh. this right here. Those slavery. You see on the picture on the right, we had the brass. We had the brass uh, thing around our neck and also the brass crown on my head. So the, a front and front and profile view of an African's head with the mouthpiece and necklace. The hooks, the hooks round which are placed as a preventative to, to an escapee when, uh, when pursued in the woods or to procuring a rest by laying the head down. And on the one on the right, you can see, you see the, uh, the, mat, the, the brass mask, the brass thing on the neck, and then you also see the bell hanging from his back with the chain around his uh around his belly. And you also see the yokes of iron on his uh around his ankles. Next slide. It's another image. Brass, the brass uh chain around the neck with the bells at the top, the bells to let them know if you try to escape, they can hear them. So that's read that scripture again. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 23. And thy heaven that is over thee, thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. So it's, re it's referring to those, the brass bills that they put on our head and the, chain, the chains that they put on our head. Uh, we are God's on earth. Uh, we are God's on earth. Uh, we are God's on earth. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>